Welcome to the presentation looking at single step media and the biology behind the design and its components. I'm Dave Morrill, I'm Director of Clinical Support for Cooper Surgical Fertility and Genomic Solutions. And today I'll take a brief look at the biology that underpins the composition of single step media. We should set out by stressing that embryo culture involves uh, many more elements than the culture medium alone. And to get the best outcomes, we also need to choose the right gas phase, um, optimize temperature and pH, and consider the number of embryos we culture together and in what volumes. In addition, we should think about whether to use an oil overlay and what sort of plastic where we, uh, we employ. And of course, we need to think about the embryology team and the level of training and expertise uh, that they have, whether it's appropriate to get the right level of results. Many of the decisions uh, may be guided by the preferred day of embryo transfer, and that will ultimately affect what sort of culture medium we choose. But whatever we choose, Ultimately, the key is to minimize stress and insults to the gametes and embryos because we know this impacts on the viability of the embryos we create in the lab. Looking at the way we design media, essentially they follow two models. Some media mimic the fluids from the female genital tract, and this is the, the um, system that underpins sequential systems of embryo culture. And the second option is simplex optimization, in which defined mouse strains are cultured in uh, a very controlled environment uh, with media component comprising a limited number of ingredients and then embryo developmental endpoints assessed and mathematically modeled. Now both have their strengths, but both also have their weaknesses in terms of the uh, mimicking female genital tract secretions. If you look at the literature, there's quite a range in the composition of uh, reproductive tract secretions reported uh, by various uh, authors. So we're not entirely sure which is the best combination of ingredients. If we look at simplex optimization, this is typically done on a culture medium component comprised of 10 components that are listed here. And the mathematical modeling um, decides which combination is likely to give the best embryo development. If we consider a medium like Sage One Step has over 30 ingredients, we can see that the 10 component model is limited to some extent. The other key factor, of course, is that these systems um, may not reflect the real world, the type of, of patients that we typically treat, because they will have different pathologies, different lifestyles. The ovarian stimulation they receive might impact on results. Um, Individual oocytes and embryos may have slightly different metabolism, and they'll be limited embryos to test. So we, we're relying on um, a best uh, interpretation of the scientific literature. If we look at the choice of media systems we can use, there are essentially uh, four systems, the classic sequential being the bottom option in this table, and the original single step medium above it with a fer dedicated fertilization medium and a single step medium, but with a refresh typically on day three. And then uh, above it, we have a single medium uh, for uh, fertilization and culture at the top. And the second option, which is perhaps more common, where there is a single step medium used for uninterrupted culture, but with a specialized fertilization medium. And that's the one that we will focus on in the coming talk. So we won't be talking 
specifically about fertilization medium, but the embryo culture from from uh, zygote through to blastocyst. Essentially, whichever system is used, the design reflects or should reflect its intended purpose. This is perhaps the easiest uh, with the sequential systems, as each medium in the suite supports the sp specific needs of the gametes or embryos at that stage of the IVF process, whether it's fertilization, cleavage stages, or development to the blastocyst. In the single step model, we must devise a medium that allows physiological processes without stress, which causes the embryo to use the wrong meta metabolic pathway at any given time. So it's a balance. Looking at the energy needs in the early stages, the primary energy source for embryos is pyruvate through the TCA cycle. And the embryo typically would not be using glucose, at least as an energy substrate. But it's important not to have high lactate levels in the culture medium, as this may push the embryo into deriving energy via glycolysis, which would not be physiological at that stage. As the embryo develops and the uh, embryo transcribes its own genes and becomes more metabolically active, there's a concomitant increased demand for energy. And this uh, is reflected by a switch to using glucose as the primary energy substrate. And again, sequential systems reflect this, whereas single step media find a balance between glucose, pyruvate and lactate. And we'll discuss this a little bit uh, more later. Looking at uh, amino acids, um, the table on the left there shows the concentration of amino acids used in Eagle's medium, which is a, a historical medium that was the basis of the early experiments on uh, amino acids in, um, in culture and in embryo culture subsequently. And what was shown by David Gardner and colleagues early in the 2000s was that um, non-essential amino acids with glutamine significantly improved the formation of blastocysts. But Patrick Quinn also showed that if you uh, add essential amino acids at early cleavage stages, then blastocysts form less readily. It should be noted that the terms non-essential and essential amino acids really refer to somatic cell culture and they're not particularly relevant to embryos. Subsequent work by John, Big John Biggers has actually shown that if we reduce the concentration of all the amino acids throughout embryo development, actually the um, negative effect of essential amino acids at the early stages is negated. And indeed, uh, Michelle Lane, again with uh, David Gardner showed that if you reduce the essential amino acid concentration, um, embryos do very well and in mouse blastocysts you get increased cell numbers. So we've solved the problem of reduced concentrations of the, all the amino acids can be provided throughout the period of culture in single step media. One of the key issues for in, un, uninterrupted culture is the potential to um, have increasing levels of ammonium forming. And that primarily comes from the deamination of glutamine, which is an unstable amino acid. We largely get around that problem now by providing glutamine in a dipeptide form in combination with alanine or glycine. And that effectively allows embryos access to glutamine as a, as a, um, as a metabolic building block, um, but without the, the issues of ammonium buildup. We also want to protect against, against um, reactive oxygen species. So culture media will typically have some antioxidant um, properties. Um, we know that reactive oxygen species have a negative impact on gametes and embryos. And compounds such as pyruvate, citrate, EDTA, cysteine, and so on, all have antioxidant properties. So we can feel confident that the uh, possible impact of reactive oxygen species is, is uh, limited. 
We can add hyaluronin to single step media. Hyaluronin is uh, known to be present in the female tract and increases around the time of implantation. And again, by, uh, work by David Gardner's group has shown that embryos cultured in the presence of hyaluronin form uh, better blastocysts uh, and uh, may also implant better. There's also some evidence that embryos survive freezing and thawing uh, and more importantly develop uh, better after the warming process if they've been cultured in the presence of hyaluronic. So potential benefits of adding uh, this uh, particular compound to our culture media. Let's look at um, some examples of single step media. So within Cooper Surgical, we have Sage One Step and the global uh, ranges. And they have slightly different um, approaches, although um, the backbone of these two media is broadly the same. Global was developed as a coherent family of media based on um, uh, KSOM, which is the, the original uh, single step uh, simplex optimization medium developed by John Biggers and colleagues. And the key here is that um, you look at the global total uh, LP and you see the uh, components. That's the, the that's the embryo culture medium, and then the collection medium, the fertilization, the handling medium, and the biops medium only have um, a small number of ingredients altered. So the backbone of the medium is essentially the same, and that's a key principle of the family of media because it uh, minimizes stress during culture. Sage one step is is broadly similar, but it was designed from the outset for uninterrupted culture. Um, and we'll talk about the, the uh, uh, specifics of this in the next slide. So when we look at the formulation, we know calcium uh, influx during embryo culture, when embryos are under stress, uh, causes a dysfunctional uh, me metabolism and that in turn affects embryo development. So in stage one step, there is a high magnesium calcium ratio. So by replacing calcium with magnesium, we can limit the potential for calcium influx, which causes this dysfunctional metabolism. In terms of the energy substrates, we add uh, glucose and lactate only in the bioavailable form. So these compounds come in um, uh, mirror image comp, uh, uh, structures called D and L isomers. And the cells will only use one of the two isomers. Um, so if we add only that bioavailable isomer, um, we can add lower concentrations for the same effect. And that's important because for instance, in the case of lactate, which would normally be added as a syrup um, containing D and L forms, we can add it as only the L bioavailable bio isomer, reduce the concentration, and therefore uh, reduce the possible effect of high lactate pushing the embryo into glycolysis in early stages, which as discussed earlier is non-physiological. We've covered the issue of ammonium buildup and the use of the dipeptide form. There is another impact of reducing lactate in that it uh, avoids um, a negative impact on intracellular pH. And we've also talked about the, the positive role of hyaluronin. Does it work? Well, uh, just to, to illustrate a couple of points, I'll show some uh, data for SAGE one step. This is continuous culture in stage one step against another medium with a refresh on day three, and you can see the results are the same. So the important uh, factor there being that the uninterrupted culture didn't have a negative impact compared to the control medium. So the design of this medium to support uninterrupted culture appeared to work. And it also appeared to work when we cultured embryos in groups. So this again is continuous culture in stage one step against another medium with a refresh on day three. But in this case, there were five embryos in 50 microliter drops. And again, the results were the same. 
when we compared Sage One Step with uh, other single step media, we we get generally positive results. This is a, a poster presented at Esherin a couple of years ago uh, by the group at uh, the Liverpool Women's Hospital. Uh, and it showed that Sage One Step gave better utilization rates and lower proport number of abnormal cleavage, cleavage events. Now, this isn't to say that Sage One Step is far and away the best single step medium, but it shows that it's working well in their system compared to other single step media. And of course, the key there is optimizing um, the conditions that you use your medium in, which we'll talk about in a subsequent presentation. So just to summarize, uh, we know that the, IV, I, the in vitro environment's artificial. We can't test human embryos. So we're relying on the scientific data we get from papers using animal models in particular. Each of the systems that we can use comprises key elements, salts, proteins, energy substrates, and amino acids. And the balance between those is critical to function. And I hope I've given a brief overview of that. Ultimately, the choice to of culture medium depends on the function, the day of transfer, and, and preference between single step and sequential. The aim is for us to provide research-led media formulations, which, when optimized in your own laboratory, can give you uh, the best possible outcomes. So that's a brief overview of media design and how it uh, is related to outcomes and to the biology of the, the uh, pre-implantation embryo. Um, I'll be presenting on uh, optimizing processes in the next presentation. Um, but if there are any questions, feel free to email me at david.moral at coopersurgical.com. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>